What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video on one of his rankings tools. Today, we're gonna take a close look at how you can perform a technical SEO audit of any website using our website audit tool. Website audit lets you analyze any website and provides you with a report on its technical SEO health. Basically, it tells you how well a site is optimized for search engines and human visitors, pointing out any outstanding issues. To elaborate, the tool can help you check website security, speed and ease of use, find broken pages and links, discover any indexation issues, identify redirect and hreflang attribute issues, check title tags and description meta tags, analyze internal and external website links, find duplicates and optimize content, optimize images as well as CSS and JavaScript files. All right, now let's access the platform and see just what the tool can do. The website audit tool can either be launched from the vertical navigation bar on the left-hand side or from the table on the main dashboard. If you go for the second option, you'll have to click on the three dot kebab menu icon next to the necessary project followed by website audit. Depending on the selected settings, SEO ranking can audit your website automatically or wait until you start the tool manually. Plus, you can restart the audit at any time, which is exactly what we're gonna do next. Once the audit has been launched, you'll be able to keep track of the scanning process. Here, the system will show you how long the audit has been running for. If you decide to audit several projects at the same time, you will see the selected project's queue position here as well. If your site has less than 1,000 web pages, the audit won't take longer than a couple of minutes to complete. But if you have a huge site, you'll have to wait a bit. The good news is that we will notify you via email once the audit is ready so that you don't have to sit idly by. The first thing you see once the audit is ready is the Overview tab. Here you get a general summary of the website's technical SEO health that can help you understand what issues must be your top priority. At the top of the page, you can see general information on the site that includes the number of crawled pages and found URLs, as well as their dynamics compared to the previous check. Next, we have the overall assessment of the site's technical state, as in its health score. This is issue ranking's very own metric that is calculated based on a formula that involves various checks, their significance, as well as the number of pages that pass checks or have issues. For example, if there are many issues, but most of them are notices and warnings, the score will be higher. However, if there aren't as many issues but almost all of them are categorized as errors, the site will get a lower score. To the right, you will see the core web vitals graph that shows key website metrics that affect the user experience and as of May 2021, rankings. Here, you'll straight away see the site's core web vitals score that is based on three specific measurements. LCP, or largest content full paint, measures how long it takes for the largest content element like an image or text block to become visible in the viewport. FID, or first input delay, measures the time from when a user first interacts with your site to the time when the browser is actually able to respond to that interaction. Basically, it defines how long it takes for a page to become interactive. And CLS, or cumulative layout shift, measures how visually stable a page is, taking into account visual content shifts within the viewport. In this block, you can monitor each of these parameters and see where you have good results, where some work needs to be done, and what should be your top priority. All of the data here is displayed both for the desktop and the mobile version of the site. Learn more about Core Web Vitals by following the link in the description. Under the Top Issues block, you will find the top 5 most critical issues on the site based on their significance and quantity. These issues must be addressed as soon as possible. By clicking on the View All button, you will be taken to the detailed report that covers every issue. Next up, we have the distribution of category graph that shows how many pages of the site have issues from each category. If all pages pass every check from a single category, a green bar will be displayed. By clicking on a category of your interest, you will be redirected to the full report. Now, let's scroll down to the Domain Metrics block. Here, among other things, you can check your domain's expiration date. Make sure to keep an eye on it so that you don't forget to renew your registration in time. In addition, you can see how many backlinks and referring domains the analyzed website has, as well as its domain trust, which is another metric developed by SU Ranking that evaluates the quantity and quality of a site's backlinks. And then there's Alexa's Domain Quality Indicator. On top of that, here you can also check how many web pages of the analyzed domain are indexed in Google, Yahoo, and Bing. 
Compare these numbers to the total number of the site's pages to understand how many technical and unnecessary pages there are. Below, we have the page indexation graph that shows the percentage of crawled pages that have been indexed versus those that haven't. The graph at the bottom of this block can help you figure out why your pages haven't been indexed. Either they don't have the 200 OK response code, or they were deliberately closed off from indexing. This page also has a graph on the distribution of crawled pages by HTTP server response codes. Here we have the distribution of pages by their nesting level that shows the minimum number of clicks it takes to get to the page from the home page. The server response time graph shows how quickly pages respond to browser requests. The number of redirects graph shows how many pages the redirect is configured on and how many redirects there are in the redirect chain. The detached pages graph shows pages that are completely or partially excluded from the internal link structure, such as dead end and orphan pages. And at the very end of the overview page, you will find a graph on the distribution of links across attribute values and another one on the distribution of pages across search engine bot directives. Every element in each graph is clickable. Just click on a metric to get a list of every relevant page. If you want to see a list of every issue found on the site, go to Issue Report. Let's see what it has to offer. This section contains information on the technical condition of the site for each of the 110 parameters analyzed by SU Ranking. The checks are broken down into 16 categories that include security, site crawling, duplicate content, loading speed, and external and internal links to name a few. We're constantly adding new and up-to-date checks to the tool so their number will only grow over time. Depending on how critical an issue is, check results are denoted by the following icons. A green check mark indicates that a parameter doesn't have any issues and that the check has been passed. A blue exclamation mark points out notices. Now, they don't always mean that there's an issue, but they are definitely worth paying attention to. For example, it's not always a bad thing if an external link doesn't have an anchor text or if there are few words on a page. A yellow triangle with an exclamation mark denotes warnings. This category includes sitemap issues, missing alt tags, or excessively long title tags. The red cross icon means that there is a critical error that must be fixed as soon as possible. For example, this category includes duplicate pages, mixed content, and critically slow loading speed. Thanks to dozens of parameters, the audit isn't only capable of pointing out issues, but it can also tell you what exactly needs to be fixed. For example, you'll be able to understand exactly what sort of SSL issues you have, why aren't some pages indexed, why duplicate pages keep on popping up, why aren't hreflang attributes working correctly, and why your CSS and JavaScript files weigh a lot. On top of that, you can also see which pages don't have a title and which ones still have a temporary redirect. Plus, find out which internal links lead to pages with a redirect and which external links point to 404 pages. Now, if all this technical lingo is making you feel a bit overwhelmed, don't worry. By clicking on the name of a check, you will find a detailed description of the issue and brief instructions on how to fix it. There are also several columns here that show pages with issues. Here you can also see the dynamics compared to the previous check. Pages with fixed issues and pages with new issues. Note that if you haven't previously audited your site, the fixed and new columns will be empty. A neat feature lets you reset the results of checks once an issue has been fixed. As a result, such checks won't affect your site's health score. In this case, if you haven't made too many fixes, you won't have to restart the audit and spend your account limits to get an up-to-date report. You can click on the number of found issues in any row to get a complete list of pages with that issue along with the detailed information on each page. And as always, the data on each parameter can be exported in an XLS or CSV file. You're at liberty to view all check results or choose to display a specific group like errors, warnings, notices, or past checks. Now, if you have previously audited your site with the help of the website audit tool, every new audit will be compared to the results of the previous one. Green and red arrows will indicate whether the site's performance has improved or on the contrary, got worse. By the way, you can compare current audit results with any previous one. Just select the date you're interested in at the top of the page. To download the website audit report, click the download report button in the top right hand corner. In the pop-up window, enable the checks and descriptions you want to include in the report. 
Then click the download button and your report will be downloaded in a PDF file. If you want to email the audit report to a client or colleague instead, click the send button over here. Under crawled pages, you can view the audit report on each page of the analyzed website. Here, the number of found issues is displayed for each page. By clicking on it, you will see a complete list of issues. In addition, you can view every key parameter of each page such as HTTP response status code, presence in the sitemap, robots meta tags and X robots tag, texts in the title and H1 header, as well as their length, page size and loading speed, and the number of links pointing to and from the page. A total of 50 parameters are available in the table. They can be enabled from the columns option right over here. Just check mark the parameters you want to analyze and disable the ones you don't. This will make analyzing a specific issue a whole lot easier. For example, you can find pages with a slow loading speed and understand what's causing the problem, or you can work on the site's internal link structure. To make the analysis process more convenient, you can filter pages by specified parameters by using the filter option. Filtering allows you to choose one or several parameters and only see pages that include them. Once you have added all the necessary filters, click the Apply Filters button. Another thing you can do here is use built-in filters to separately view pages with errors, warnings, and notices. Last but not least, you can also decide to view audit results not by pages, but by directories. You can switch to this mode by clicking over here. This allows you to separately analyze different language versions of the site or pages from certain website sections. Let's move on to the next section of the website audit tool, found resources. Here you will find information on the analyzed site's resources including images, CSS, and JavaScript files. By clicking on a number under the source URL column, you can check on which pages the resources use and whether search engines can crawl it. For images, you can also check the alt text. In addition, you will see the status code for each resource, its size, and loading speed. And just like under crawled pages, all data can be filtered here as well. You can also use built-in filters to parse all resources together or choose to parse images, CSS, and JavaScript files separately. The next section contains information on the analyzed site's internal and external links. For each link, both external and internal, every key parameter is displayed. Server status code of the page the link points to. Link type, hyperlink, image link, canonical, hreflang, meta refresh, CSS, or JS. Link source, as in the page on which the link is placed, anchor text and type, alt text for image links, and link type, do follow or no follow. To make the analysis easier, you can enable only necessary columns and make use of filters. And just like in the other sections of the tool, the link report can also be exported in an XLS or CSV file. As soon as two or more audit reports are ready for a single project, you can compare their results under the crawl comparison section. All you have to do is select two necessary dates. The system will then analyze the two reports and show you the dynamics for every parameter. By clicking on Archive, you can access audit reports from the previous version of the website audit tool. Here you'll get a complete picture of the parameters that have improved, those that have gotten worse, and those that still need to be worked on. Once you have fixed some issues, you can restart the audit at any time. Besides auditing websites, the website audit tool also allows you to quickly create an XML sitemap. It's predominantly used to tell search engine bots which pages you want to index. To do this, click the Generate Sitemap button in the top right-hand corner that can be found in every section of the tool. Next, you need to specify which pages must be included in the sitemap and configure the necessary parameters. By default, the tool will select pages with 2xx responses, but you can include other pages in the sitemap too. You also need to specify the page change frequency for pages of different nesting levels or crawl depths to let search engine bots know how often your content is updated. Finally, you need to set the priority for scanning pages on a scale of 0.1 to 1, where 1 is the highest priority. Now, let's move on to the tool settings. Flexible setting options allow you to have complete control over the website audit process and resulting report. Let's look at everything in order. Under Schedule, you can automate the audit and run it on a weekly or monthly basis. Just make sure to specify the date and time of the check. When setting the time, please note that the time in the service is indicated in the GMT time zone. 
Here you can also specify the email to which the reports will be sent. By default, the email of the account owner is specified, but you are free to change it. Moreover, you can decide not to send out automated reports at all. Let's move on to source of pages for website audit. Here you should specify which pages the tool should scan. The options are either all pages of the site or all pages of the site along with subdomains. The system can also audit the site based on your own XML sitemap. After the first audit, the service will automatically locate your sitemap. Alternatively, you can manually add a link to the XML sitemap. To do this, click on the Add Sitemap button. You can also upload a custom list of pages you want the system to check. To do this, add a TXT or CSV file with each URL entered on a new line. Under Rules for Scanning Pages, you can specify if our bot should take into account no index and no file directives, as well as the robot TXT file directives. You can also add additional rules to include or exclude certain web pages from the audit. To prevent our bot from crawling duplicate pages, you can instruct it to ignore URL parameters such as UTM source and UTM content during the crawl. If your site's pages are closed off from crawling, use parser settings to enable our tool to audit your site. Select the user agent name that will be used by the service to crawl the site and give it access to the pages by specifying the username and password. Moving on. Here, you can select the maximum number of pages that can be crawled. But before setting the number, check your subscription plan's account limits to see how many pages are available for one site. You also need to specify the maximum scanning depth and the maximum number of requests that can be sent to the server. Depending on the capabilities of the server, you can either increase the number of requests to speed up report loading or decrease it to ease the load on the server. Under Report Settings, you can independently change some parameters that the system takes into account when crawling a site. For example, if the length of a title in one of the pages of the analyzed site goes beyond or falls short of the length recommended by the service, from 10 to 70 characters, an error will be indicated in the report. So you're welcome to change these parameters depending on your goals. And the last section here is Monitored Issues. Here you can disable some checks if you think they are irrelevant to your site. Such checks won't be taken into account during the audit and will not affect the overall health score of the analyzed website. Of course, you can always turn any disabled checks back on at any time. And that is it. We have reviewed every corner of the website audit tool. If you still have questions, be sure to write them in the comments section under this video or reach out to us via live chat on our website. We're always happy to help you take care of any issues and give you everything you need to efficiently work with the platform. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to stay on top of everything we do at SE Ranking. Stay safe and until next time.